During my series of videos using the two plate method, I've been asked the question, how do I continue the system on? If you look at my videos on the three plate looping method, we know that we use the terminals within the actual ceiling rows to carry it onto another room. However, we can't do it here, can we? Because this line conductor here at the lighting point, often things like LED down lights, is not a permanent line, but is a switching line, a neutral and a CPC. And if I was to take them into the next room, the only way those lights would work is if the room in this one was on, you'd have control of the lights in a different room. So obviously it doesn't work like the three plate method. We're looking at the two plate method. So we need to find our permanent line, neutral and CPC connection in order to take it from the room we're currently in to the next room and continue on the system again. And in all of the two plate videos, this one being the one way, this one being the two way, and then obviously the two way and intermediate system, we've always taken the feed to the switch. So we took it there to the switch, we took it the feed to the switch in the two-way method and also in the one-way method. So when we want to continue this system on, we need to go to the switch in order to make our connections that will go into the next room. So let's have a look at that. We've got a cable here, which is our one millimeter squared PVC, PVC twin and CPC cable, often called on earth twin and earth. And we would need to take one of these with our permanent line connection, our circuit protective conductor and our neutral from the switch and take it into the next room. So let's simply do that on this one way circuit first, then we'll look at it at two way and two way intermediate. So the cable coming in here, which is our one millimeter squared twin and CPC cable brings in our CPC, our neutral and our permanent line connection. And if we follow it through in the back of the switch, it is actually in the common terminal. So it's in there in the common terminal of that switch, the permanent line. We've drawn some sort of little square here with a black pen. We're simulating there a connection such as a Vargo, an Ideal Industries, standard connector block or butt or through crimp. It's, it's more beneficial not to be using this type now because obviously we can add or change these simply for one that can take more conductors. So at the minute we've only got two cables in here which are the neutral connections. So we could simply swap that in for a three conductor connector from Vargo or likewise a three conductor connector from Ideal Industries. Neutral, permanent line, CPC in the actual back terminal of the box, if it's a plastic box or a metal box, etc. So we've got to find where the CPCs have been secured. So what we do then is we take a cable from here, picking up the connection for the neutral, the terminal there, which is our permanent live, this case in the common, and our CPC, and just take our cable to the next room. Remember, the route that this cable takes may be under floors, buried in walls, etc. We're just currently looking at the connections within the switch in order to take a cable to the next room in order to continue the system on. So this cable here would come out, you'd come out the same connector. Let's imagine we're coming up this way. We'd come out with our neutral connection. We'd need to bring one out of the common. We'd bring one out of the common and out to our next room. And we'd bring one out of our CPC. So we'd bring one out of here. So in order to go off to the next room. Now, some of my drawings, I have been striking these with a yellow. It looks like I didn't do it on this one, but yeah, my students like to do that. So what we do is we go to the switch when we're using the two plate method. We look within the switch for the connection for the neutral. We make our neutral connection. We pick up the CPC from wherever they've been terminated. And we look for the permanent line in this case connected in the common of the switch. And we go off to the next room with this cable. In our case, our one millimeter squared twin and earth cable goes to our next room. When that cable comes into the next room, we can either repeat the process that we've got here, take the feed to the switch and do a one-way circuit. Two-way we'll look at in a minute or two-way and intermediate, whatever we've got in that system. So we don't go here anymore because we know that this is only a switching line. Unlike the three plate method on the channel, there's loads of videos on it. This is the two plate method. So in order to pick the supply up to go to the next room, we have to go into the switch. So let's have a look at that on the two-way one. I'll bring that one in next. So I'll get it sort of positioned in the right place before we start. Okay, so here we go. We've got two plate method using uh, two-way switching. 
exactly the same as we just looked at. Up here in the actual light fitting itself, we only have a switching line conductor, a CPC and a neutral. So if we took this to another room, there's an issue, obviously because of the switching line. We come into the switch itself. We can see now we're getting a little bit crowded in here now. So what tends to happen on site with the two plate method is the box that either is chased in the wall or positioned in the wall is normally deeper. Now, if it's a dry line wall, they often use these style of boxes, okay, in order to fit those in. You can see from a work in the workshop that is considerably deeper than our normal lighting box. Well, it works for two ways then. It gives us more space in here for the two plate method, which is great, which means that we don't have any issues with crushing cables. And obviously that's a standard depth as well for these boxes. You can't get them shallower than this. So that's a bit of a bonus to us. So when we're using the two plate method and say we've got a dry line or stud wall, the box that's been placed in the wall is nice and deep, which allows for more connections, especially because we're using the two plate method. And we're gonna introduce another cable that goes to another room, which makes more connections. So that means that if you were maybe fitting a metal box, you'd fit one like this, which is often used for say socket outlets, which is deeper than the standard box for a lighting circuit. Again, especially if you know you're using the two plate method, you could go one stage further and obviously go for an even deeper box. That's often used for things like cooker outlets. Okay, so you can go through, the more room you've got, the easier the connections will be to make in here using the two plate method. And again, it could be that you're using a twin box, you have a multi-gang, might be four switches in there. Again, that type of box gives you plenty of room for those connections. So here we go, we've got our circuit here with a two-way using the two plate method. We know we're gonna to need to pick up our connections from inside the switch if we wanna take a cable through to another room. We need a neutral, a permanent line and a CPC. Hopefully we can see that we've got our connection here drawn in, maybe with uh, the Vargo connector we've got here or Wago, however we wanna say it. We're gonna take a neutral from here, a CPC from here, but of course now we've gotta be careful to work out which one is our permanent line connection. With my um, two-way system, I always like to bring the brown coming in connects to the brown of the three core going out, but this is where you might need a little bit of investigation in here. Neutrals are obvious, it will be in some form of connection, whichever form it comes in. The CPC will be obvious, but to pick up the permanent line, you've just got to be careful to see what the system is using in order to pick up the permanent line. So that's our permanent line, our neutral and our CPC, and a one millimeter squared cable for me might be 1.5 on site, needs to go from this switch into the next room, bringing the neutral, the line, and the CPC. So let's do that. So we simply know our neutral is coming out of there. Remember, it's gonna go through the fabric of the building. I've shot it downwards. It might be going up through the wall, under floors, etc. just easier to show it going down. We've got our permanent line connection, which is actually here, which comes out and obviously goes off to the next room. And our CPC connection, bring it down like so our CPC connection goes off into the next room as well. So we've used uh, a little bit of investigational skills there to work out which is the permanent line within that switch. So neutral, obviously in the connector. We've got our CPC, possibly in the back of the box, et cetera, in its CPC terminal. And then we've got to pick up our permanent line in order that we can take the cable through to the next room and start again, line, neutral, and CPC take the cable possibly down to the switch, repeat the two plate method in the next room. Hope this is becoming a little clearer as we go. There are other videos on the channel where I physically make these connections and talk about what's going on inside the one way, two way and intermediate switch using the two plate method. This is the drawings that accompany those videos. There's also a link in the description for all my drawings um, I've done on the channel on lighting circuits. Feel free to download those and make your own wiring diagrams up as well. And remember, as I always say, my students should be using a ruler. Gaz is doing this upside down and he's doing it freehand as well. So let's have a look at the next one, which is our two-way and intermediate. Hopefully we're getting a feel for it now of where we're picking up the actual permanent connections from within each of these accessories. Let's bring this one in. And position it all like just there. Okay, so we've got, whew, it gets more and more complicated as we go. We've got two-way and intermediate. Again, it's the two-plate method, so we've brought the supply into the actual switch. We know up here, we've got a neutral, a CPC, and a switching line. 
That's fine if we want to add extra LED downlights. So this video here was created from the original two-way intermediate to show you how you can introduce more and more downlights in a circuit by simply bringing the switching line neutron CPC to the light fitting, to the next light fitting and so on, and making the appropriate connections. Again, check out that video if you haven't already seen it. So we're back to how do we pick up from the three switches we've got now, the permanent line, neutral and CPC. Well, this one here contains the connector, the connector that will have our neutral in. This is the switch that we're concentrating on in order to make our connections. These ones here won't give us the terminations that we need in order to carry it on. So we're gonna need the neutral, the CPC, and again, it's. It's clever that my system, I always use the permanent line onto brown. So if I open that switch up and I'd wired it, I'd know that that is the permanent line connection. Remember on site, there might be some investigation into the permanent line. Clearly you can see in some form of connector will be the neutral. We can clearly see the CPC, but we've got to investigate again before introducing our cable, which will bring permanent line, neutral and CPC from this switch and go into another room and continue the system on. Let's add those in. So again, let's take a neutral out of the block, goes into the next room. Let's take the CPC out of here and go into the next room. Again, let's put a little bit of yellow on that one just to make it a little clearer. Remember, you'd be using a ruler, or not as a case may be. And then the permanent line connection for me is gonna be here. I know that from my system, small investigation if you're unsure. And we go off into the next room. So we take that cable, a one millimeter squared twin and CPC cable, off into the next room, permanent line, neutral and CPC from the connections in that switch. And again, look how crowded that is getting in there. So having a deeper box becomes a massive advantage. Remember, these are only one-way switches. So, uh, sorry, not one-way, one-gang switches, I apologize. Yeah. So these are one-gang switches. So there's only one switch on here, here, and here, whether they be a two-way or an intermediate switch. Problem starts coming when we introduce two and three gang switches using the two plate method. So we've got three gang switch here, there's three switches on here, two gang, two switches on here. All of a sudden we've got more and more cables coming into the box and obviously using the two plate method helps you at the lighting point. Could be that this is for kitchen spots, under pelmet lighting, so the lights underneath your kitchen units and an outside light. If we're using the two plate method with a three gang switch, it's gonna get very crowded and you can now see the advantage of having a deeper box in order to make those connections. The more time you spend on site working with a two plate method, the more comfortable you'll become with it and the ease of the connections in there, okay? So it's not difficult, uh, it's just like everything. The more times you do it, the easier it's gonna become. So in this video, we tried to show you in our three diagrams we've used using the two plate method that we can extend the circuit into another room by not coming out of the lighting point, but picking the permanent line, neutral, and CPC up from the switch, whether it be a one-way one switching, two-way or two-way and intermediate switching, and how we can make those connections. And as always, I hope this video has been some help.